So is your audience aware of this person or company or musician or group? Can they enhance your brand? Would they have influence on my audience, right? Would they, and would they promote your type of brand? Is there a similar interest or is it a complete disconnect, right? I would love Kim Kardashian to be a part of my company, but does that make any sense whatsoever, right? Two, what is the role? What do you want this person and or group and or company uh, to do? And it needs to be a thoughtful request. Um, the more famous, the more thoughtful it has to be. There has to be research done. There has to be a real thought about why are you reaching out to this person um, and or company uh, or group and you want them involved. You want them to act in a commercial or a video. You want them to perform. You want them to appear at an event or at your booth. Voiceover. You want them to endorse you. Maybe you want them to write on the back of your book. Um, you want them to be active in your company or you want them to invest in your company. Maybe you want their music, if it's a group or a band. Uh, you want their likeness or you wanna work with their estate if, they're, if, they're, if they've passed. Or you just want something simple like you want them to like or share your post on social media. Three, you have to research it. How do you find them? How do you reach these people? Well, thank you to our incredible, Mr. Jim Smith, uh, Reference Solutions at the local library is a fantastic resource, incredible resource. Google, yes, and that, I know that just sounds silly, but you really need to do a deep dive into Google. Uh, magazine articles are fantastic. YouTube interviews. Uh, you'll, you'll get, you know, little bits and pieces. I'm working right now with a gluten-free bakery, and we're gonna reach out to famous celebrities who are gluten-free, right? It's, but you, you only find that if you really do a deep dive into the person and or group. Social media, very obvious, but you wanna see what they're posting. What are they posting that might be similar or might, uh, you know, oh, that, oh that, I didn't know that they really were into environmental issues or I didn't know they really loved their pets as much as, um, you know, as they do. Wikipedia is fantastic, really gives you some really fantastic information. imdbpro.com is fantastic if you want a big name. Um, it costs a little extra. It's actually owned by Amazon now, uh, but that is a fantastic resource, and I'll show you that. You have to pay for that. You do. Okay. That's, yeah. IMDb yes, Pro. IMDB Pro. Uh, also, bookingagentinfo.com is also, I think you get three days of free, um, and now the music interlude. Um, so this is IMDB Pro. So say I really want um, Thor to be my uh, spokesperson and or I would like him to do voiceover and or I would like for him to appear at one of my events or I'd like for him to be knowledgeable about my company. Uh, IMDB Pro will give you all the contacts over on the right. Talent agent, manager, publicists, gives you all the, all the addresses, phone numbers, contact information, all right there. Uh, booking, uh, bookingagentinfo.com, another fantastic resource. And actually what I love about this is that they give you the breakdown. Actually, as you're going down before you get to the contacts, it'll say, what are you exactly looking for? And then it'll kind of refer you to that person versus I don't know who to talk to. Do I talk to the management? Do I talk to the publicist? Do I talk to the manager? Do I talk to the stage manager? Do I talk to the producer, right? It gives you, gives you the information. So advice, don't ever approach a famous person as the savior. They're not gonna save you. They're not gonna save your company. They're not gonna save your product. You need to go to them and say, this is, we would love for you to be a part of this. Or did you know about this? Or did you know about this company? Or did you know about my product? And share it with them. Get them involved. 
but don't go to them and go, it would be fantastic if you would just endorse my brand and then suddenly I'd be famous and I'd make a lot of money, right? So really have a plan B through Z. Four, big approach, shoot for the stars. Absolutely positively can do it because you never know who is going to say yes. Absolutely positively do not know. And you can say, there's no way on earth that Sandra Bullock is ever gonna like be a part of my company. You don't know. You absolutely don't know. If it makes sense, if it's the right time, if, it's, if it makes a good match, um, Look at Betty White, loved animals, loved pets. If you were a nonprofit group and you were promoting animals, Betty White probably would have done it in a heartbeat, right? I mean, because it's near and dear to their hearts. So when I worked on the uh, campaign to defeat the casino at Gettysburg, this was my hit list of all the of all the celebrities that I wanted to track down, okay? This is 2010, so literally, I'm not kidding, President Obama, Michelle Obama, Tom Hanks, Denzel Washington, et cetera, et cetera, musicians, actors, politicians. I wanted, I wanted it to be big because I felt that this was a really important topic. We did not want a casino half a mile from the battlefield, and so I reached out to all of these people. Now, after a lot of time, ended up Ken Burns, David McCullough, Matthew Broderick, Stephen Lang, Susan Eisenhower, Colin Powell was a question mark, Tom Hanks was a question mark, and Michelle Obama's office, even though I'd reached out to them three times, never gave me an exact no. <laughs> so that was kind of where I was left. Then I ended up for the actual video shoots Ken Burns, David McCullough, two-time Pulitzer Prize winning author, Sam Watterson, Matthew Broderick, Stephen Lang, all actors, um, Paul Buca, who's a Medal of Honor recipient, and Susan Eisenhower, whose grandfather is Dwight D. Eisenhower, President Eisenhower. And I needed music, so I reached out to John Williams, and John Williams said, yes, I would love to provide the music, because he believed in it, right? And because I wasn't looking to him to solve my problem. I said, I've got all these celebrities already, but I need music. And John was like, I'm in. So by pure coincidence, the day of the hearing, when we presented to the Pennsylvania Gaming Board, Michelle Obama showed up with her two daughters at the Gettysburg Battlefield, the exact day of the hearing. So she said no, but she showed up at the battlefield, which made obviously a lot of local news. And then I needed more music because I had interviews from all these people and I didn't have enough music tracks. So I went back to John and I said, John, I need more music. And he's like, what do you want? And I said, I would love the music from Saving Private Ryan. And he goes, okay, let me see. So he reached out to Spielberg and Paramount Pictures got permission through Spielberg, Boston Symphony Orchestra, the American Federation of Musicians, and Paramount Pictures all said yes. Mm. So again, you don't know. You don't know what somebody's gonna jump on. And by the way, going back to that, all of this was done for free. The entire production, every single person involved with this video shoot did it for free. Studio, editing, sound mixing, all the actors, everybody who was involved did it for zero dollars. These are some of the, the performers that I've worked with in the past, uh, producers, sports people, um, musicians, but supermodels, um, and I've also worked with estates, um, worked with the Patsy Cline estate, worked with the Thomas Edison estate, and also did a campaign with Chris Farley for a uh, for a medical a medical treatment for addiction, and reached out to the Chris Farley family. And because I'm from Wisconsin, I did the Wisconsin angle, 
And Tom Farley, his brother said, well, that's funny because I'm gonna just start now, I'm gonna start giving speeches on addiction. We would love for Chris's likeness to be a part of the campaign. So we ran billboards all over Los Angeles uh, in front of the Chateau Marmont where, where John Belushi OD'd. And John Belushi was Chris Farley's uh, idol. And again, because I did the research, I knew that. So it was that insider information. Tom said, I love that. I want to be a part of that. We uh, recorded Tom, his brother, for radio spots. This was a campaign that absolutely positively failed. It was for Gillette. I was working as creative director at Men's Health Magazine, and we did a campaign with Eli Manning and Archie Manning for Gillette Shavers. I'll tell you why it failed. The client hired them because they were New York Giants fans, okay? <laughs> Horrible, absolutely horrific. There was no real connection to Gillette, except they just were sports people. They wrote the interview questions, they rewrote them the day of the shoot. So Archie and Eli had no clue what was coming. The questions were idiotic, like beyond idiotic. So we forced them to do something that wasn't natural. They weren't talking about football. They were talking about shaving. And oh, by the way, they don't shave. Literally, Eli takes like two months. It's like an ongoing joke with all his buddies and the Giants that he can't grow a beard. <laughs> and it's a family thing. Like Peyton, Eli, and Archie, none of them know how to grow a beard. So wouldn't Gillette have thought of that? Like maybe we should ask? Um, it was it was absolutely horrific and we did like three videos and then a bunch of short videos and they're painful i i'll show you like the beginning of it it's just it's so awkward it's beyond awkward now this is something where where i did a campaign for a barber shop down in florida where uh they're huge jacksonville jag fans uh this is in poncha vidro which is a big golfing community right outside of jacksonville and Turns out Coach Peterson, uh, Doug Peterson, is actually a client of theirs. So we actually made signs, uh, their parking signs out front, uh, saying that this is reserved for Coach Pete. And he always wears a visor. He's kind of known in the, in the NFL world as always wearing his visors. Won the Super Bowl with the Eagles and then now at the Jacksonville Jags. Well, then we got him to, to, pose, next to, next, to pose next to the sign which of course went crazy on social. And then we actually made visors that said uh, Coach P's doppelganger and sold them in the, in the barber shop. And it was a great way just to like jump on this kind of local, local famous person bandwagon. Number four, we can do a down home approach, which is who's famous in your category, okay? Doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be, you know, Julia Roberts. It could be somebody that's, that's in your category that is famous. Consultants, authors, researchers, doctors, thought leaders, influencers, professors, industry leaders, successful people. I mean, I do a lot with the American Battlefield Trust, which preserves uh, battlefields for history, uh, historical purposes. And, you know, I work with famous photographers, war photographers, and stone carvers, uh, museum conservators, but I make them famous. Right? I, I, people don't necessarily know who they are, but they are big in what they do. Number five, you can rethink it and you can make your own famous person. So this is something we used to do at Men's Health all the time, which is you find just somebody who's really interesting, who may be using your product or maybe uh, a, a good connection or a good parallel to your company. And then you make them famous either on social or in books or uh, in presentations. But the question is, what do they get out of this? And that's really a big question, which is they're gonna ask right away, which is, okay, what do I get? And if they don't get money, what are they gonna get from you? Uh, you know, is it notoriety? Is it, you know, what? And, or is it just an interest? It's something that's very interesting to them that they go, hey, I wanna be a part of this, this is great, or this is a really great product, or this is a great company, I wanna be a part of that. Um, do I have 
two minutes to show yes. a video? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to show you 10 seconds of this horrific Gillette video because I just want you to see like how awkward and bad it is. When was that? This was 2016, I believe. Did it actually ever air? Oh yeah, it aired. And it actually got a ton of, of hits. Wow. But, but I think it was a one-time thing. Like people were like, oh, Eli Manning, click. Oh yeah, turn that off. That's bad. That's terrible. So it made the raspberries of... Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's see if you guys can hear this. Nope, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Okay, here it is. Okay, can I, can I turn this up? Please hold. Really short. This is so bad. I'm Archie Manning, father of Eli Manning. <laughs> I'm Eli Manning, son of Archie Manning. Manliness, um, <laughs> when I think of it, I think of a guy that's um, kind of uh, confident, the um, way somebody carries himself. And manliness is. Uh, just understanding what your responsibilities are as a man, whether it's your, your family. Uh, That's you it. I can't, I can't, I can't watch it anymore. It's just so bad. It's absolutely just, it's so bad. It is just so horrific. They obviously didn't prep them. No. Well, yeah, it was just terrible. It was awkward. It, 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 like, like, uh, what? Describe manliness. I mean, I like, seriously, like, who asked that question? It was the dumbest question ever, so right? Is it just like an ad on a like men's health website or yeah something? so this ran on the yeah. website and we had you know it was like a huge campaign with banners and in the magazine and on the website and then you click it and you get all these videos and then they had like three of these long form videos which were just painful and then like short ones throughout the, but like i said the click-throughs were like incredible what yeah did they, what did the mannings think of i don't know I never asked them i really don't care really <laughs> they were and they were we'll actually eli was I, Eli was a dick. He was he yeah, was not right. like and and I get it because he showed up and it was like but it was very obvious they were there for the money. It yeah. was like I'm here for the money. I'm gonna do my thing and I'm gonna leave. And yeah. yeah, it was like it was terrible. Okay, can I why, yeah, just okay. okay? This is actually okay. This is an example of when it really works. Uh, I do a lot of work with Medal of Honor recipients uh, and veterans and Gold Star families. And this is a, a teaser for a, uh, a whole campaign, print and video and web um, with three Medal of Honor recipients for the American Battlefield Trust. Conviction is knowing what you believe in and then doing it. Wait, you're not seeing it. Please hold. I have to share it, that's why. Okay, we gone? There we go. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Sorry. Conviction is knowing what you believe in and then doing it. I say that it's divine intervention that I survived. If I was the same situation, I would do it all over again. There were 27 medals of honor awarded for Iwo Jima. It's the highest recognition for valor that you can get. My name's on this, my name's on the back of it, but the medal doesn't belong to me. It represents those who never got to come home. This ground, it, it is hollowed. Many other battlefields across our country are. 
Everyone should have the opportunity to go to Mars House. This is where several medals of honor were earned. Here at Gettysburg, most people do not know that 64 medals of honor were awarded to individuals who went above and beyond the call of duty. Each medal of honor recipient, his battle is different. The very ground underneath their feet, that ground means something very deep to each soldier. You're standing on ground where people sacrificed their life. It's got to have some emotional impact on you. It's my responsibility, it's your responsibility to remember what's been given for us.